Let's build a computer. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a machine today. And this one is going to be right now around $1,100. Now I did order these parts about two months ago. And at that point, this stuff was about $1,000 total. So there has been a slight increase in computer components due to the certain economic conditions that exist uh, at this moment. Um, however, you can still get really good value. This is gonna be centered on a Ryzen 5 3600 processor <clears throat> on the Gigabyte Aorus X570 Elite with Wi-Fi motherboard. Um, we're gonna be using the Gigabyte uh, Radeon um, 5600 XT uh, card that I did do a review on here. Um, what was it, last week or the week before? I don't remember exactly. But I did do a review on this and this is a really nice card. Meant for 1080p gaming, topping out the settings and some 1440p. This is not a 4K gaming system. I will not represent it as such. And I'll tell you that if you try that, it, you'll probably be very disappointed. Regardless. And then we got a couple other parts here. We're gonna use uh, Corsair MP510, uh, 480 gigabyte uh, solid state drive. I don't have my hard disk in here, uh, but that's fine. We'll get that uh, hooked up here as well. And then uh, 16 gigs of Trident ZRGB uh, 3600 uh, megahertz kit for the RAM. Um, pretty straightforward. So why did I choose these parts? Well, one, I did want to keep the system low and I wanted to go for an all AMD system. Right now, Ryzen is, uh, or AMD is killing it with the Ryzen desktop processors. It's just, I think you're getting your best value right now for your dollars and performance with the Ryzen processors. Uh, seven nanometer uh, process on the, uh, on the CPU dies, I, you know, what can I say? Yes, the 9900K from Intel is the fastest current gaming processor, but it's on a very old uh, uh, process for its architecture. And unfortunately, I just feel like they're finally starting to lag behind AMD. So we're gonna go with AMD and, and same thing, I wanted to do an AMD uh, graphics card. And this graphics card, as I've shown previously, is a very, very good card for the money. I, I really like it. And uh, so that's what we're gonna use. And all of this is gonna be going into the Fantex P400A um, adjustable RGB case um, I'm excited to use. Um, should be nice. I've not done a white themed build yet, but that's what we're gonna do. So here we go.
All right, here's our moment of truth. Let's see if this thing uh, boots up. Here, oh, turn on first, right? Well, it's a good first sign when the fans are spinning. And they have color. That's all the same. All right, I'll boot it up. Got to the post screen, first try, which is nice. I didn't do the smart thing, which is test all my components first, mostly because I'm not water and cooling this and it wasn't that hard to put this all together and figure if something fails, then it fails, but not best practice. Best practice is to test everything uh, while it's outside of the case. Uh, let's talk about a couple things. One, I need to go through and update the BIOS on this. I haven't done that yet, but I will do so. I will also install Windows on this and we'll make sure that everything's working right uh, there. However, that's that's menial stuff. I wanna talk about the case. This is the P400A addressable fan case from Fantax. Uh, I'm not a fan of it, pun intended. And why I say that. One, and this this is a minor one, so that I should probably not lead with this, but first off at the back of the fan, I, or back of the case, I hate when they only have room for a 120 fan. Make it a little wider that we can put a, a 140 on there. Just, it drives me freaking batty that they do that. Okay, that's the first thing. Two, DC fans in here. Come on. Fantex, send fans along with that are PWN, that are good fans that people want to keep in the case because here's problem number three. You can't buy this exact fan from Fantex on their case or on their site. So how do I have five fans on here because it came with only three? Well, I found a manufacturer that makes a fan that's almost exactly like theirs. It's in 140s and it's PWM, so that's nice. But um, just really, really frustrated with the fact that they would, you know, it's not a cheap case. I mean, this is a $100 case, $120 right now, but $100 when we got it. It's just cheap things like that drive me bonkers putting good fans that you can buy and you can have as many fans on there as you need so that people can do what they want to do. All right, the next thing is, the motherboard that we used was the um, X570A Aorus Elite with Wi-Fi. Nice motherboard. It's got more RGB headers on it than it does fan headers. Someone want to explain that to me? I mean, come on, give me some fan headers. I get it that most people now are gonna use some sort of a splitter for cable management and whatnot, but I mean, seriously, it, it get, there's not enough fan headers on here. It's ridiculous. I mean, you got a system one right in the dead center, so you have to run your wires down. So you got wires exposed, no matter what, there's no way around it. You got a system two fan up here, and then you've got two um, C, uh, CPU, op, or CPU fan and CPU optional fan. That's what they give you. I mean, come on, people. All right, complaints over. What was nice? It works. I mean, I really like the fact that uh, this case was fairly easy to work within. I like the fact that you've got manually, um, I guess, changeable lighting effects. Should that be important to you, you can cycle through them. Uh, I just, I, I like what they've done on this thing. I mean, you got all these different effects on here and you got the different uh, colors that you can cycle through. I just, I think that uh, this is a nice little touch so you don't have to have it plugged into the uh, motherboard. And you know, one thing that drives me nuts is the, um, when the software doesn't work from the factory. So like on your Asus Aura or the Gigabyte Fusion or whatever the hell's the other is, whatever else is out there. Uh, but this works. So this is nice because you can bypass that as long as you're okay with doing everything from here which leads me to another thing. You don't have to have that bloatware on your machine if you don't want it. I think that's awesome. So this turned out great. Uh, booted right up. I am excited to try some games on here and uh, go from there. Now, this was just meant to be a simple build vlog more than anything else, if you want to call it that. Um, this is an $1,100 gaming machine as of now. $1,000 a couple months ago. Mm. It's today's economy, what can I say? Anyway. Hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you didn't, you know what else to do. Hopefully it's not that. Hit that subscribe button for me and we will see you in the next one.